show Money Talk. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Lunch with the Finance Bunch on Dash Talk Radio. Today we have in our midst a special guest. Yes, we do, Matthew. Mm -hmm. Yes, her name is Dr. Julie Miller. Hello. Hello, Dr. Hello, Miller. Hello. How are you? It's great to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, it's our pleasure. I met Dr. Miller at a USC Women's Empowerment Conference. Go Trojans. Yes, and she just blew me away with her stage presence and what she had to say. It was so powerful. So I wanted our listeners to have an opportunity to glean from your experience and learn some things from you. Is that okay? Absolutely. I thank you so much for inviting me today. Oh, definitely. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about Dr. Miller. She is founder and president of Dr. Julie Miller Incorporated. Over the past 30 years, Dr. Miller and her team have certified business writing trainers and helped more than 750,000 professionals achieve their personal and professional goals. That's definitely a lot of people. That's a lot of people. And I wanted to mention that because that's impressive. Oh, absolutely. In 2008, Dr. Miller developed a program with SuccessFactorsInc.net. She has a doctorate in leadership studies. And Dr. Miller has an extensive client list that includes Microsoft, Costco, Starbucks, Cathay Bank, Kenworth Trucks, Securities and Exchange Commissions, Freddie Mac, Bank of the West, City of Atlanta, Boeing, New York Life, Ernest and Young, and Expedia. She has a Just powerful to name a few, you guys. resume. <laughs> yes. And she's so humble. It's only a couple. <laughs> you know what? At the beginning when I was saying, oh, I have to do your resume, she said, don't read the whole thing and just cut, minimize it as much as you can. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, her catalog is very decorated and beautiful. Yes. And we feel so honored to have you here. And, you know, the doctor has also written two books, and I want to mention that. Her first book was Business Writing That Counts. It's sold over in over 10 countries. And her newest book, Secrets of the Self-Starter, 48 Amazing Stories to Ignite the Self-Starter in You. And that's this book. And she autographed a copy for me. <laughs> I'm so excited. And she's a true self-starter. So <laughs> that's how that works. Yes. And so, Dr. Miller, we have so many questions for you. And we have so little time. But I just want to jump right into it. The first thing, since you're a guest on our show for the first time, I'd like to ask you, you know, what is your background? Where are you from? So I grew up in Los Angeles, so I'm an L.A. native, born and raised, and we wow. now live in the city of Seattle, which is the fastest growing city, I told you, in the United States. So it's like crazy busy and very exciting city to be involved in. And um, I got my degrees down here at USC and my doctorate in Seattle and came from actually as a baby boomer from the teaching profession and decided what I really wanted to do was work with professionals in helping them reach their personal and professional goals. So that's when I started my, my training company. Wow. Well, you started your training company in, a, in an area that's really heavily needed. Matt and I were talking about this on Absolutely. the way in this morning. And what was your question about that, Matt? Because you were saying, wow, like well, what? she tried to name me all, all these different companies that you worked for and, and have helped um, with the process. And I know that writing is really important for like a lot of businesses. So I wanted to know, um, as far to, as far as what you were doing with the companies, what was um, how did that come about? Because I know a lot of companies can use them, can use what your just, um, right. tools and skill set differently. Right, right. Well, you know, our tagline for the company is we grow people who grow your business. OK, so whether you are trying to be a better, more effective communicator or you're trying to use the nine success factors, which I know we will get to, it's yes. important. But here's an interesting fact that writing is the costliest of all workplace activities. Mm -hmm. more, and you think about that and think about what happens if you can't write well. Contracts aren't negotiated well. Uh, uh, businesses lose proposals. Right. Mm -hmm. People lose their position. I cannot tell you how many people call me and say, I'm not going to make director. I'm not going to be a consultant mm -hmm. any longer because I cannot write well and I'm taking too long to write. Okay. So those are the two big issues. It isn't that people don't know how to write. People know how to write. Right. But how do you do it quickly, efficiently, 
and clearly. And that right. really is the issue with every single company I work with is, it could be we lost another proposal. Wow. And that's when I get the call. Does the formula change based off of each company that you work for as far as like how you help them? There, there is certain standards to good writing that I always uh, address, but everybody has a different culture and a different style in their company. And right. you have to speak to that. So where maybe a consulting firm would be a less, le little less casual than an accounting firm. So you have to speak to that. Okay. But the bottom line is where people get in the biggest trouble is that they don't write to the reader. You know, they're talking all about themselves, how fabulous they are, how great yes. the company is. And when they don't get the proposal, they're shocked. Right. And I said, because you talked about yourself. Right. You never addressed what their problem was. That's <laughs> why they came to you. All the time, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's great work. I've worked with wonderful companies, wonderful professionals who are all trying to advance in their career. And if you can't write well, you will never get a promotion. That's right. It's absolutely wow. uh, uh, the death of any kind of advancement if you can't write well. Right, effective communication and writing. Key, absolute key. Wow. Yeah. Now, what made you decide to start this company? Because you were a successful teacher and things were going well for you already. So what made you decide to jump out and become an entrepreneur? You know, it's interesting. Um, I think teaching is a wonderful profession, but I could not live by that bell one more day. <laughs> I just could not live Did it make by you cringe the bell. Now? Yes, yes, <laughs> the very thought of it. So, and I, I, I wasn't, even though I think teaching can be very creative, it just wasn't enough for me. I needed a, a bigger stage. Yes. So what was interesting is that those skill sets I learned in college really did help me when I said, you know, I'm going to go out on my own. And what was interesting was I had no finance background. I had no business background, but I knew I had a product that people needed and that I could help them achieve their goals. That's what I've, I'm always driven by. How can I help people do but you better know, with their lives and with their profession? Right. And you know, that's the key to success is Absolutely. finding a, something that someone else needs. That's right. And addressing that need. That's and right. that's the key to success. So you found a niche that's right. that, like you said, everyone needs to know how to write. And most people, when you get down to it, they're very unsure of their writing skills. Very they're not much sure. so. It's like standing no on stage are. having exactly. something announce your weight. Yes. <laughs> or age. <laughs> or age, right? <laughs> like, no like, for sure. like, no, no not so much, right? <laughs> Right. So, wow. Anyway, it's fun. It's great. And I've, I've built the business from there. And, and we've been talking about multiple streams of income. Yes, absolutely. That's and right. uh, it's so important for entrepreneurs to realize that if you have all your eggs in one basket, I, I, I have a story of a young woman who was a contract. Uh, person for Microsoft forever. Well, mm -hmm. Microsoft decided to reorg like all right. companies right. do. It was the only client she had and there she was. Oh, wow. And had no other marketing clients to fall back on. So multiple streams of income is so key. It really is. And you know, we were talking about a little bit off, off to the side about how the 2008, you know, oh, when the, the market worst. just flatlined, right. you know, the only people who really survived were those who had multiple streams Absolutely. of income. Absolutely. Because they were able to look at how to diversify themselves further because they had at least a safety net somewhere that right. they could hold on to, right? Right. Correct. And sometimes you have to have your hands in multiple different industries. Because I know for me, um, as soon as I graduated, as you know, um, I was in the fashion industry and the fashion industry went belly up as soon oh, as the God, recession yes. hit. And yes. so it was like you've seen companies literally overnight disappearing. Right. And then they were hiring people in positions that were overqualified for that position for because they could positions. for entry level positions because they could get them because the market had tanked. Correct. So the students coming out of school didn't have a chance because no. people who had been in the industry for forever were taking those entry level positions just to stay afloat. Correct. So to have, you know, more than one stream of income, I think is key to survival, especially in the way that this world is going today. Right. Right. Well, what, what I what I, I would say to your to your audience when you're developing your product, your idea, your service, mm -hmm. your brand, that you have to have a core. Yes. And, for, and so for us, it was first it was business writing that counts. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I you know, you think to yourself, how, how what is there to this product? Oh, deep and wide. So what you do is then you 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 develop 
products that complement that, that right. provides that different stream of income rather than saying, I'm going to do this and, and uh, flower arranging. Exactly. But what can you do in your niche where you are competent and have talent and can say, oh, I, I, I can not only teach, but I can coach. I can have online courses. I can have webinars. I can have editors. I can have you know, all kinds of di books, yes. tip right. cards, everything that goes along with that. So I would tell you that, and, and my niche is so deep, it will not die. That's right. And it's just, it's just amazing. Now, granted, it's taken a lot of years to get there. But, you know, I, I would say to all of your listeners, if you do quality work, mm -hmm. they will find you. That's right. They will find you. As we can speak to the videographer in the room. That's right. <laughs> right? Right? That's right. He does good work. People find them. And people find them. Absolutely. Yeah, and well, that was going to lead me to a question that I had, because for you switching industries and finding your niche, how did you go about acquiring um, clients? You write a book. Ah. That's the number <laughs> one marketing tip I can give you. You write a book. Now, is it going to make you rich? No. But what it's going to do, it's going to give you that 15 minutes of fame to say, see, I'm an expert. Ah. I wrote a book. And, and from that, it's a great launching piece. Okay. And you see people do it all the time. And by the way, and if my listeners out there, think about not a murder mystery, but a how-to book. They sell three times That's the right. amount of how-to books as fiction books, oh, always. Wow. Right, because then you are an expert. I That's mean, to right. write a book, you have to research and do all of right. that. So that when you stand up in front of a room and say, hey, I, I've written this book on success factors and it really gives you a leg up. That's really good. Now, is it pretty writing a book? No, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work, right? But uh, the rewards are amazing. Yes, and it also lends to what we were talking about, which is multiple streams of income. That's right. The book may not make you millions of dollars, no. but it will bring in income and That's it will right. attract people to you right. as the expert in that niche, right? That's correct. So now when the market fell apart and you were moving your company upward and onward. Correct. You know, what were the steps you took? Because you do have multiple streams of income. So for a person sitting there who, they didn't go through that, that whole 2008 thing that we went through, even right. Matt went through. They are a millennial and they're starting now. And they want to know, and they're flatlined because they don't know what to do. Correct. Did you write so, everything out? Did you, with planning everything that you wanted to do, did you write everything out and then? Let and me then tell do you it? what I did. <laughs> yeah. I did, I did That's a good do, question. <laughs> that's a very good question. What I did do, because I strongly believe this, is that you have to have a vision of where you're going to go and you've got to write it down. Yes. Absolutely. And then I really believe in vision boards. A lot yes. of people think, oh, you know, that's weird. They're cutting beautiful. Paper, you, know, <laughs> yuck, you know, cartoons and pictures out of magazines. But it is such a visual reminder of yes. where you want to go. And do you realize, I was just looking at my vision board. Now, I may have been a year or two off, mm -hmm. but I have achieved everything on that vision board. Oh, wow. Everything. That's now, what it's happens. taken years, yeah. right? It isn't like it happened yesterday. Yeah. Right. But, but because your mind acts in accordance with what you see and believe. Mm. Yes. So if you yes. have a, a vision statement of where you want to go, and then you have something you can look at on a daily basis... Mm -hmm. And I, I strongly believe in that. And I believe in affirmations too. I think Absolutely. it's really important. In fact, if you talk to any successful business person, right. athlete, musician, entertainer, across the board, they all visualize their success on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you can make it in those worlds, yes. right? Yes. You've got to be able to see where you're going. Absolutely. Yes. Especially with the landscape of competition across the oh, it's board. Crazy, with that for any industry it? you want. You, you know, know, there's the other person just chomping right behind you to, exactly. to get it. Yeah. Fighting at your heels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Very much so. So that answered that question because, like I said, I have a lot of millennials who, you know, they want to know what to do. They have so much talent. They do, but they have to narrow it. They have to decide where is their sweet spot? Where yes. is the area where they know that they not only have a passion, but a strength they can uh, do? And what I often tell people to do is, what you need to do to find your passion, if you're really struggling with it, mm -hmm. pay attention to what people say to you when you're doing something you think you're doing it well. Yes. Listen to that. Mm. Yes. Listen to what they say. And that was my my cue because people said, you know, you're pretty good at this. I'm going, really? Why? You know, I mean, you you know, you kind of right. get that. Fit. Not why I was looking for an ego 
a stroke, but I was looking for, you know, what am I doing? Well, confirmation. That, yes. So you try it again and people right. and then there and there lies the passion. Did I know what I wanted to do when I was 22, 23? I just wanted to be a good teacher. I just wasn't sure where my life would take me. Which it's been an mind. amazing ride and amazing. I was going to say, it seems like it has been an amazing journey. Your catalog is absolutely amazing. Oh, you're very kind. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's true. It's, it's true. I've had some very funny experiences <laughs> along the way, too. Now, what would you say is one of the the main characteristics you see across the board in successful people? So we can come back and talk about that. Okay, very good. And that is that they have a vision, a very clear vision of where they're going to go. And they're able to persevere no matter what. I mean, you just listen to anyone who's being interviewed and you hear them say, you know, I wasn't an overnight success. I worked right. for years. I never gave up. No matter what people said to me, no matter the bad press, I'm going to move forward. Within their passion. Look at that young man that just got drafted by the Seahawks. Has one hand. Right. Yes. One hand. Absolutely. And First that young ever. man said, I'm not going to be defeated by my handicap. Absolutely. Because I can only imagine how many times people told him no. Oh, yeah. An incredible kid. It's a real story of perseverance. Wow, I like that. So when we come back, we're going to talk more about perseverance and success and how they intertwine. I'm Charlene. This is Lunch with the Finance Bunch on Dash Talk Radio, and we'll be right back with Dr. Miller. Yes, indeed. And we're back in the studio, Lunch with the Finance Bunch on Dash Talk Radio, and we're here talking to Dr. Julie Miller. And we're having a great conversation about success, how she got to her level of success, and how she advises others to do the same. Indeed. Right? So now we were talking about in the last segment how success can be really planned out. If you have a vision board, determination, mm -hmm. and of course the skill set, right? Correct. So now once you have this skill set in place and you're talking you know, and now you got to get out on the road. You got to go take your <laughs> show yes. on the road. You right. got the skill set. Right. You got the vision board going. Right. Just pack How this van up. Pack this van up. <laughs> now, what do we do? What do we do? Well, I would tell you that one of the things, uh, uh, let's go back to this whole idea about perseverance and vision. Yes. And just add one more thing. And I think you're right. You have to work with the skill sets you have and yes. develop those and pay attention to those. Yes. What I will tell you is, you hear a lot from people, oh, you got to have passion. You got to have, everybody's got to have passion. You got to find passion. got to live passionately. Though I agree with that, I would expand the definition of passion mm -hmm. to being fully engaged in the work you do, almost in the flow. Mm. When yeah. you are working in work that matches your strengths, it's stunning. It's stunning. Mm -hmm. And I do agree that when you, they say find your passion and the money will flow, mm -hmm. but that if you have quality work and you love the work you do and that comes through and you continue work to, you know, yes. upgrade your skills, that's just like you Keep have. Sharp, yeah, right? take a class, whatever you need. You have a better step up than someone says, well, I think I'll go work for the bank. Right. Really? Okay. Why? Why did you walk in that door? Why did you fill out a, a, a you know, an application? Right. It wasn't just because you liked the bank. It had to be, there had to be something. And if there isn't, that's where you need to stop and really sit back and think again. What yeah. is it I want to do? You got a very short time on this earth and you better be doing the work that, that will give you happiness, peace, some prosperity. And also, you know, I'm a little corny. I do think it'd have to help the world in general. <laughs> I, I really so feel it's yeah. very important that there's an impact somewhere Absolutely. to other folks. And I definitely feel like you hit the nail on the head because one thing that I feel like is a consensus with a lot of success um, talk books is you have to find your why. And that's your absolute reason. Right on. You know? Right on. And so many people don't know it. At all. They don't know their why. <laughs> Well, just why they stumble through life doing jobs that they're not fulfilled by because they don't know their why. Because even if you have to take a job that is temporary to help put food on the table Absolutely. while you're pursuing your passion, correct. if you know your why, it makes that job tolerable. That's so if you're correct. working at a fast food place or wherever, not to say that that can't be a career, but if you're not doing it because it's your passion and you do have a passion, if you know why you're there, it makes the day go by faster because you know that... This is temporary. Exactly. That's right. It's transition. I, you just have to I'm transitioning. Right. I'm, I'm going to do the best I can here 
to be the best I can for the people who blessed me with the money that I can now use for my passion, because I think that's important too. honor where you're at. So that you can be honored when you get to where you're going. Totally agree with you. So don't just go get a nine to five and just, you know, kind of slough your way through it because it's not your passion. No, you need to operate in excellence everywhere you go. But that doesn't have to say that that's the only place you're going to wind up because you do have your passion that you're working on. Exactly. Absolutely. And, you know, all of you have had the experience, the retail experience. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Good and bad, right? Yes. I was in a Starbucks the other day. And this young man so loved what he was doing. Yeah. You know, he was giving out samples to people and, you know, it just loved it. I mean, he was really passionate, passionate. about his product. Yes. And you've seen where, you've seen the other side, mm-hmm. right? Where people go, yeah, <laughs> exactly. you know, yeah. What do you want? <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. exactly. I'll tell you a quick story. This is a, a Nordstrom story. So we had to go to a funeral in Minnesota in the middle of winter, and we know how cold it is, right? Yes. And I never owned a pair of boots. So I go into the shoe department, and I say to this young man, now I have to go to Minnesota in three days, and I have to have boots, and they must be cute. If they're not cute boots, I don't want them. Right. So he brings me out a pair of boots, cute boots, really cute boots. I said, I'll take them. He says, funny thing, we don't have your size. You don't have my size. I'm leaving them. He says, stay right here. What hotel are you staying in Minneapolis? Blah, blah, blah. Calls up the hotel and says, Dr. Julie Miller will be arriving tomorrow, and we're going to be delivering a package to the hotel. Will you hold it for her? Yes. Then he calls the Nordstrom in Minneapolis and said, please deliver these shoes. Now, can you believe it? This is a kid that loved what he was doing. Wow, you talk about customer service. Customer yes. service, to the passion, next level. Yes. Mm-hmm. perseverance, it's all right yeah. there. Yeah. That's someone that is engaged. A now, is he going to do that forever? Probably not. No, but he has the foundation. Just what you just said. Yeah, the right. willingness to serve, the passion right. to serve. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And you know, that's a, the, at the core of all businesses mm-hmm. is the you're serving someone. There's an end customer, no matter what you're doing, That's you're correct. serving There's someone. There's a human being at the other That's end. That's right. right. So you have to have that passion to serve to be successful. Right? Especially if you want to return customer. Exactly. Absolutely I'm not right. coming back if you're not nice to me. Right. Exactly. No, Especially I'm not. Especially with all the options that are out there and yeah. how competitive the landscape is. You have to have something that makes people want to come back, but also have a great personality tied in with that to make them want to come back. Right. So now, Doctor, going from that question, sure. what do you think makes your company different from the others? You know, that's always very tough. You know, I don't think there's been anything invented new since, mm-hmm. <laughs> since Socrates. Right. <laughs> but, it, but there is a place where you differentiate yourself. So mm-hmm. for me, when I did the book on the secrets of self-starters, yes. What happened was, what I was stunned about, I interviewed hundreds of people across the United States and Canada, ages 22 to 90, Mm -hmm. every ethnicity, every industry. And when I asked them, what was it that made you successful? What was that factor? It was, well, it was stunning, first of all. But the same nine came up over and over and over again. Wow. And I realized there was something to this. So could I craft a company, a vision, a way of helping people reach their potential by using the nine success factors that it helped these people be successful. Could I do that? Could I share that with others so they could be successful? Right. So that's how it came about, slowly, Slowly. right? Slowly. So that's a perfect segue into what are the nine success factors? Yes, people should write them down. They should write them <laughs> down. Get your, your pen. pen, pen that's right. Pen. Rewind. Put hit pause. And get Dr. your pen Miller out. Is so. going to drop jewels. For that's you. right. Exactly. Well, here's the big three, and we do call them the big three: passion, vision, and perseverance. Those are the big three. And if every one of you can think of a time where you use passion, vision, and perseverance to be successful, I don't care what it was, raising a teenager, right? Mm -hmm. Staying married, (laughs) Uh, you know, going to college, getting your high school degree, getting your teenager out of the house, whatever it was, you use those three. And they are foundational for the other six. So the other six are seizing opportunities, risk-taking, positive thinking, self-motivation, that, in, you know, that just initiative that, that you have, that drive, mm-hmm. compassion, 
which I thought was very interesting, people said, and creativity. So if you have passion, vision, and perseverance, you know what to be creative about. Oh, that's right. Right? So when people are starting their business, they're thinking about their business, and it'll change. No one has the vision with all the bells and whistles, mm -hmm. but you have at least something on the horizon you're looking at and the direction you want to go. Then you can add these others. Then you know where you want to risk, that's where right. you want to seize an opportunity. Yeah. It isn't just out of the Those sky. Guys. It's with that vision. Ooh. That's really cool. One of the things that I really like about all those nine points that you brought up is they all fight the adversity of fear, which a lot of people operate in, which limits them to what they want to do. I that's, right. that's really brilliant. Yes. That is really brilliant. So yes. I think your, your book absolutely hits it on the nail on the head. That is absolutely right, talking about fear. Yes. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I yeah. feel like it hinders a lot of people, and I feel like so many people have so many gifts and skill sets, but the world doesn't get a chance to see what they are because they limit themselves with fear. So I definitely um, want to allow people to know, definitely get Dr. Julie Miller's book because it is an adversary the against fear. The self-starter, yeah. Thank you, thank you. It was really funny. When I was starting to write this book, I have a wonderful mentor, a woman who lives in Portland, Oregon. Anyway, she called me up. She said, so how's the book coming? I said, I haven't. I, I'm not working on it. She says, what's the matter with you? I'm afraid. She says, get over yourself and get back to the book. You know? <laughs> who cares if you're afraid? Right. Walk through it, you yes. know. And, and, and who knows what the fear was about. I, it wasn't procrastination. It was just like I was so stuck with how to move forward. I couldn't find the path. And then... She said that and kind of pat me on the head. And okay. you know, they said something interesting about you can always tell a woman who's assertive because her head's very flat. Well, why is that? <laughs> From being patted on the head <laughs> very patronizingly. All those years. That's, what, That's true. <laughs> what a great it. line. Yeah. Now, you mentioned mentor. And, you know, at your level of success, I'm glad you caught think, that. Yeah, people wouldn't think that you would have a mentor. And so I want to just take a moment to talk about that because you need a mentor at every level of yes, success. You, do. you don't get to the next level of success if you don't have a mentor. That's very true. So can we speak to that? Because yes, you do please. have a mentor. I do. And she's. Uh, and I think you need coaches in your life yes. or groups mm -hmm. in your life. And, you know, my husband is my mentor as well. But I, I it, it, they're an advisor. Yes. There's someone that gets the whole sense of your business and, and can speak truth. Yes. Nice. Not, oh, you know, Julie, you're just doing great. Just keep it up. No. Listen, this is what I'm seeing, and mm. you need to correct your course. Yes. Uh, you need to stop doing this or do that, or have you thought of that? Mm -hmm. And then to be able to wrestle with it. And remember I said in that speech about my Big Thinking Women group. Yes which is, and I would tell all of you, start a group of advisors. Get a board of advisors together as you start your company. Or even if you're nurturing an idea, you need those outside voices that's to right. tell you that's not going to work or this is going to work. Um, it's extremely important. The trusted advisors that you meet with regularly because yes. they hold you accountable. That's Absolutely. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got a report back next month, well, Julie, how'd you do on the way? Get to Not it. so yeah. much, right? Right. So and, it's yeah, because they make important. that list. They they say, "What do you say you were going to do?" Yeah, okay. exactly. One, That's two, three, we do four, exactly five. do that. And, and what by what date? Yeah, exactly. And so now you get the pressure, right? Yeah. <laughs> so no, it's on I your have calendar. to do it because they're going to bring it up the next time. <laughs> right? I you. And you yeah. can't lose face, no. right? No. And how many excuses can you come <laughs> up with? You know, right? Dog ate my homework. You know, all bit. Yeah, exactly. Now, mentors. Now, coaches and mentors are two different. They can be the same. She she serves in both roles for me. But one of the things I have found is um, a lot of mentoring programs in companies do not work. Mm -hmm. They do not work either because they're forced, they're formulatic, mm -hmm. or you, you or it's the wrong match. Mm -hmm. I do think mentoring programs in companies can work if they've really put some time and effort into it. But unfortunately, I've seen so many that don't. Mm -hmm. And you have to find someone that's willing to spend time with you, right? right? And this and this gal has been in her business a very long time. And we're in similar services, so that's very nice to have yes, that. And exactly. And she's that. done everything. I remember when we first started talking to each other 20 years ago. She said, Oh, eventually this is gonna happen for you. Nah, it'll never oh yeah. So I'd call her, all right, you're right again. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. On to the next big dream, yes, right? Yes, and you had a mentor as well. Absolutely. I've always had a mentor. And one of my mentors is actually in this room, right, Q? 
And when I first met him at a coffee shop um, with a mutual friend of ours, and I said, I know absolutely nothing about what I'm doing as a radio show host. (laughs) I don't know what I'm doing. And he said, I'll help you. I see where you're trying to go, and I'll help you. That's amazing. You help me with this set of things, and I'll help you with that set of things. And that really touched my heart because up to that point, it's not that people weren't willing to help me, but the personalities have to match. Correct. You have to be able to hear the person. Correct. And so I not, not only respect him, but I can hear him. Right. So when he tells me something, I know it's truth and I know where it's coming from. It's coming from a good place, from love. even if it's a hard conversation. Right. So those are the type of mentors you need. Someone who is either in the same industry as you or in a like industry Correct. that can help you sharpen your skills from a loving place, even Absolutely. when it's in a hard space that can get you to that next level. And so that's that's one of my mentors. Mm-hmm. Yes. Very good. I yeah. appreciate you, Sharp, because you get didn't cry. Normally during moments like that, Dr. Miller, I she know, normally gets overworked up and overwhelmed. And she'll be like, ah! <laughs> but we're I on the radio. Your cameras are rolling. I don't want my <laughs> mascara to run. So right. I've learned how to hold it back. But yeah, so that that's, I'm glad you asked me and that question. And pick carefully. And, and that was oh, interesting. Absolutely. Pick carefully. And they will, and sometimes they just walk into your life. Yeah. And you know it's right. Yes. Um, and, and don't be so concerned about the person who brought them to you as because it's a gift. Correct. So sometimes people bring you a gift and they don't even know that that's what they're doing. Mm-hmm. They were just the person chosen to bring the gift to you. So whatever that relationship is doesn't necessarily have to have a whole lot of meaning because their purpose was to bring the gift to you. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. And you'll pay it forward. And you'll pay it forward. Exactly. I always do. Yeah. So do I. It's, it's very important. You don't just, you know, hoard blessings. You also pass them out. Right. Yeah. People, You're your hands and, you should know, be open. And, and people are, know this in the audience and you, you can you can intuit it when you meet someone who's willing to give. Yes. And willing, who's only willing to receive. And yeah. you right. do not want people in your life that have that kind of view. Mm-hmm. No, because. It's all about them, and yes. and that and those are not people that, yeah, they're not going to help you first of all, and they're yeah exactly they're just takers, and so I eliminate those people from my lives very quickly. I do too. I, yep. do too. I find yep. a way to gently remove them from. And my it life. takes <laughs> time. It doesn't all happen to you when you're 22 years old to no, know it all doesn't. this. You have to kind of have some life experience to see it. Yeah, and I'd like to say to the millennials, relax. You're going to get there. It's oh, okay. they're such smart. They're such smart people. They are so Young smart, but so they, smart. they just don't have like no patience. Yeah, right. I was gonna say a lot of millennials. We definitely we want it right now, right now, right today, right now. now. And, and I wanted it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> just relax. You'll get there. You'll get there. Now, another thing um, that I noticed in this conversation, as we're talking about mentors and coaches, um, from a coach's perspective, a coach doesn't necessarily have to be in your profession. Mm-hmm. Correct. Right. What a coach does is they bring out the best in you that's already there. Correct. Right. And I think you have to be very particular about the coach. Yes. Now, for me, I did not want a coach to say and tell me about your childhood. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah, me either. I've like... it. I've been there. Let's get on. <laughs> but what I wanted was a business coach yes. that would say, I remember when she challenged me and said, well, why don't you grow your business? Well, I'd love to, but I don't know how to. I'll help you. And yes. it just, it just happened. It was just kind of incredible yes. that I was able to grow the business and hire all these trainers, and they went around the country teaching all this curriculum. It was just amazing, and I'm doing it now with Success Factors right. Inc. dot net as well. We have the same kind of model, but at a different level. So, so I want to get to that, and so in our next segment, let's talk about that part of your business sure love to love to all right so this is charlene on lunch with the finance bunch i'm having an amazing conversation with dr julie miller we're so happy you're here and we'll be right back we're on dash talk radio and we'll be right back welcome back everybody we are on dash talk radio with the one and only miss charlene and our wonderful guest dr julie miller yes Um, jumping back into the segment we were um initially talking about a little bit a while ago fear yes and i know with millennials fear is a big thing dr julie miller and one of the things that limits us with fear is where a lot of people are afraid of failure and they feel like it's the end 
So can you touch on that a little bit on how people can operate out of fear to get to success? Well, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'd like you to think about an example that maybe has happened in your life where, you know, you thought, oh, I, I just can't move forward. This mm -hmm. isn't going to work out for me. And maybe how you work through that. So if you don't have it right this second, I'll say a few sentences and you can get that thought in mind. I'd love to hear an example of what okay, you I think for you have one? Um, for me, it was um, flashback five years ago when I was trying to, um, I was in the fashion industry, graduated, um, had success working for different companies, but there was going to be a transition. And I realized that we were going to need, uh, for my business, I was going to need multiple streams of income because the industry that I was in wasn't completely working. Um, but I didn't know what my next step was. And so I met a business partner at the time who ended up, we started off great. Um, and we <laughs> created a magazine uh, publication, had no experience with magazine publications whatsoever. And I knew what we wanted because I was looking at the landscape of how the industry was going. And everything that we loved was a void that no, I felt like no magazine publication had, was able to put together. Like magazine publication were great at like, like one thing, it was like, you have music, you have fashion, you have photography, art magazines. But I didn't see for the young millennials, there was something for us where you can encompass all of that on one platform. What a clever idea though. So, yes. um, and I was like, who can speak the language better than us as far as we can, and because my business partner was like, well, who's gonna be our target market? And I was like, we'll be our target market. And then I'm like, we could just scale it out in business terms because, um, because there's nobody that's 100% directly correlation. We speak the language, we know what's hot, we know what's cool within the industry. Mm -hmm. So I was like, we could target ourselves and it'll make it really easy. So I think once I got that affirmation, it helped me kind of step out of fear because I knew exactly the trajectory that we could have. I, I think it's a brilliant idea. I think I so would too. hope you'd come back and visit it some other time and see where that could go. Or if there's an iteration of that idea. Right. I, I think that's really an interesting idea. Now that we've told 10 million listeners. Listeners, uh, yes. Some of them, <laughs> but you know, it's very interesting. For some people, it's like my mentor said, well, get over yourself and move right. on. I don't care if you're afraid. Right. Walk through it. Walk through it and do it. But as we were talking about the break, there's that fear of failure. That's There's that fear of, oh, it isn't going to be perfect. perfect and yes. I remember when I wrote the first book, which was the writing book, and, uh, you know, it had to be perfect, right? I was right. talking about writing, for goodness sakes. And she said, well, I hate to tell you this, but you're going to have a typo or two in there. Not possible. Not <laughs> an, oh, yeah, of course, of right? Course. And so, of course, you're first humiliated and think, you know, and then you just move on and you go, okay, I've learned a lesson here. You learned right. a lesson there. And you just move forward. Move you forward. just have to keep persevering and that's why that support group like a big thinking women yes. or a coach or a mentor is so important for you that so that you're not alone right and, and so, so that, that you, you have can. someone to help you with some judgment and yeah. accountability and all of that because in a lot of cases when you're doing something new you know our mind was created to protect us right and so when you're doing something new what's the first thing your mind does it destroys it because or tries to because you're moving into an area that you're not comfortable with because it's new mm -hmm. so you have to do things that are that or have people around you to support you that can keep you moving forward because if not at a lot of different intervals you'll be like a deer with the you know in the headlights like uh oh I'm moving into a territory I'm not sure of maybe I should just stop here mm -hmm. but when you have a mentor you have a coach you have supportive people around you you can keep going because they're going to push you like you said you were going to do this What's the problem? Okay, Get so over let's yourself. Hear your let's story. do it. Let's and hear so your story. for me, mine was the radio show. Mine was the radio show. I was so nervous. I'd never done this before. And so, you know, I'm the person who jumps into the deep end, not knowing how to swim and figure out, figure it out while I get when I get in. So I said yes to this radio show. I had no public speaking, you know, in my experience in my background. But I knew that there was something that needed to be told, a story that needed to be told. And so since it was handed to me, I figured I was the person who needed to tell this story. So here I go. And so I, you know, I did it big. I said, okay, I want, I want video too. I don't just want radio. I want video too. Right. And so now I'm looking back at the footage and I'm going, I don't like this. This is not perfect. This is ugly. I'm not putting this out. So for months, I, I would have the guy come, not this gentleman, but a different guy come and film every week. And I would not put the YouTubes up. 
And so he said to me, he goes, Charlene, you know, you're paying me for a service <laughs> and you're not allowing me to do the second part of it. And you've paid me to do this. And that's put the videos up. And I said, because they're not good. And he was like, they are good. Mm. They're just not great. It's okay. He said, people are more comfortable with seeing your growth. You don't just show up in perfection. People want to see the growth because that gives them permission to grow too. Right. So he said, right. get over yourself, basically. <laughs> Put the film out there. Let people see it. And what they'll get an opportunity to see is your growth, the progression. And that will give someone an opportunity to grow too. And Charlene, Absolutely. they're interested in the content. And they're interested in the content. I mean, we're looking content. at, you know, we... We won't tell our secrets, but we told right. the videographer <laughs> That's right. before he started, like That's get right. on the ladder. Hello. But uh, <laughs> it's the content That's right. that people want. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I mean, we still want to look our best. We got to look but our best, but <laughs> still. It's exactly. the content that's right. important. Right. Pe exactly. Pe they, people stop, you know, checking you out and critiquing you when what's coming out of your mouth is valuable. When I was, uh, I did a lecture at USC to a group of the entrepreneurial program. And what I did is I brought three of the people in the book to the, to the class. Oh, nice. oh, it was nice. very fun. Very fun. Um, a young man who was a young man at the time, who was the first African American to break the color barrier at, on the Naval Academy on football. Oh, nice. oh wow. And he says, don't say, oh, gee, I'm out of my comfort zone. Say, I'm expanding my comfort zone. That's right. Mm. Now, isn't I that like gorgeous? That I it like has, that a it lot. It has to do with the fear rather than saying, oh, I'm way out of my... I'm going to expand my comfort zone. That's so right. more ideas, more experiences, more opportunities will drop in. Amazing. So I had these amazing men speaking. So this young man in the room raised his hands and he says... You guys are all so successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you had any failure? Mm -hmm. And this guy speaks up. He said, yeah, let me tell you about it. I lost $30 million for my investors. Mm -hmm. And I had to pay every dime of it back. And I did. Wow. Now I've made some of it back. Yes. But of course, I, and he says, and it was a very public, in the newspaper kind of failure. Kind of failure. Wow. So he's, you know, no one, I don't care if you're an athlete. You don't win every race. That's right. You don't throw the shot put every time. I mean, everyone has failures. And it's that forgiveness, mm -hmm. learning yeah. the lesson and moving forward. And moving exactly. forward. Right. Wow. Moving forward. Wow. Yeah. This was a powerful segment. Now, when we come back. When we come back. I want to talk about success. The yes. success factor, right? We're going to ask her what her thoughts are on success. Thank you so much, Dr. Julie. Thank you. We appreciate you being here. This is Lunch with the Finance Bunch. I'm Ms. Charlene, and we'll be right back. And we're back with Dr. Julie Miller on Lunch with the Finance Bunch. And, of course, we're on Dash Talk Radio. Now we're going to talk about success. We've gotten our fears out of the way. All of our fears are out of the way, thanks right. to you. And now we're going to talk about the success side of we're things. We're coming straight to the light, y'all. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Dr. Miller, what is your definition of success? I'm going to throw it back on you first, because I would really like to hear what you think success is. You know, I used to think success was, you know, having financial, a, a, you know, a large financial portfolio. Um, as I mature, I think that success is more of the number of people you can impact positively. That to me is success. If you can have a positive impact on people, I think you've acquired success. I agree with you, and you can come on the road with me with that message. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because in the book, Secrets of Self-Starters, a lot of those people do not have lots of zeros, you know, on their paycheck. Right. right. But they have been successful in that they have used their talents and their skill sets to achieve. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell the story because this woman is so amazing. Her name is Dr. Roberta Brenton. She's at USC Keck School. Mm -hmm. And this is a young woman that grew up in the Midwest, and she was Hispanic. And at the time, there was a certain, as she said, certain side of the street you walked in, mm -hmm. certain pew you sat in the church. And she said, and she, and she has a twin, and she never thought about success. She says, well, I'll get a job as a lab tech. I can do that. Right. So she ended up at this lab in New Mexico, and the doctors kept saying to her, Roberta, you are so smart. You should go to school. Me? No. 
Well, anyway, finally, they, they got the application, got her going, and she went to med school. And she had the experience first of, of some very unusual experiences working in a mental hospital. She said it was like being, she says, I would go down to talk to these women in this basement with a light, one light bulb way at the top of the ceiling and mm. had these kind of draconian experiences. Right. But what she learned is that they were, these were women who were in a mental institution, and a lot of them because they had lost their memory. Wow. So Roberta has spent now 30 years of her life and she has discovered the protein in a woman's brain to stop Alzheimer's. Oh, wow. wow. This woman is unbelievable. And her life has been about compassion and about serving others. Serving others. And she, what she's going to do, she said, I want it so the grandmothers, the mothers, and the daughters mm -hmm. can have their memories. She's an amazing woman. She's won every award President Obama has awarded her, um, and she does beautiful work in the community here in Los Angeles. So there's a successful person who didn't start out saying, oh, I want a lot of zeros on my paycheck. Oh my right. If you're listening right now, we love you. I love you. <laughs> yeah, she's an amazing, amazing woman. Now, I've heard your example of someone else's success, but I want to know what your definition of success is. In well, your life. It, it's, it's very similar to you. For me, success is if I can help one person reach their potential yes. so they can have the career they want, the life they want, then I've done my job. Yes. That's, then I've done my job. And that is really key for me. And, um, and I have been able to see that. I have had people call and say, you know, I'm really doing what I wanted to do now, and I found success. So that for me is is I build on other people's other success. People. That's why I keep saying we grow people to help grow businesses, because if people are successful in their career and the business is successful, everybody wins. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Matthew and I talked about this on our way in, and I'm going to end with this because I think you've answered every question here with that statement. And we wanted to know, Lunch with the Finance Bunch, what made you decide to honor us by coming on this show? Oh, I would just say the opposite. I would say you've honored me. And for me, it's if I can help people take a look at their lives and realize that they just need to take the next step. And it sounds so corny, just the next, next step, step forward. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep moving forward. And as that, the doors open, opportunities appear, you seize them and you go forth. Amen. Yes. I mean, it's good a little closer when I say this, but Dr. Miller, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, I think that in, in the work that you do, I'm speaking um, probably on behalf of you, but I've, it feels like you found your passion. I really have. And that's why I tell people, I said, I, I am so blessed because I'm living my passion. I'm doing what I was supposed to be on this earth to do which is to help others reach their potential. And I know it seems like a cliche, but it is true. It's true. It is true to help people see it. Now, I know people have absolutely loved hearing you today, so you have to let the people know where can they find you and also where can they find this book, Secrets of Self-Starters? Well, Amazon, <laughs> of course, Secrets of Self-Starters. And my website is successfactorsinc.net. And you can always find me by just Googling Dr. Julie Miller, and you'll find me that way as well. So successfactorsinc.net. Well, Dr. Miller, it's been a pleasure. A Absolute pleasure having pleasure. you Thank on Thank you so much. Show. I loved it. Loved and you're it. definitely invited back. Perfect. Yes. When you're in town, we'd love to see you again. Wonderful. And find out what you're up to. Because we want to know what is a day in the life of Dr. Miller like, right? It's very busy. I was going to say, because it seems very busy. <laughs> yeah. Well, we want to thank you again for coming on. I'm Charlene. And I'm God's gift, Matthew. And we want to thank you for coming on Lunch with the Finance Bunch. And we're here on Dash Talk Radio every Tuesday at noon, at noon giving you more information to use, hopefully, and we just want to make sure that you have an amazing week, but be back here next Tuesday at lunchtime. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Lunch with the Finance Bunch. I'm your host, Ms. Charlene, on Dash Talk Radio. Tuesdays at noon, I'm God's gift. Really, Matthew?